Hi, I know you're lesbian. My lesbian. Why do you keep conflating queer with being niche or different? You call yourself queer, but you're not. You're just different. You have a boyfriend and identify as queer. Would you please explain? It seems more and more that you are just virtue signaling by calling yourself queer. Despicable. Are you a lesbian? I assume you are, judging by your style slash look. Wait a second. Did I just hear you say you have a boyfriend? And here I was thinking you were a lesbian. My gaydar is completely broken home. I know she's lesbian, but damn, this girl is so fine. I thought you were a lesbian rather than atheistic. I wonder if this awful woman's parents look at their lesbian daughter and wonder, where did we go wrong? Why does she swear so much? Why do I, as a heterosexual man, always fall for lesbians? Hypothetical question, though. Loved your vid. Good luck and love. Thank you. No matter how much you say that you're cis, female, and bi, it's funny how many comments call you male or lesbian. Isn't it just? <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma. Your favourite internet grandma and loud bisexual. I really don't know how to be any louder than this. <laughs> All right, we'll do a proper intro. This is su it's surprisingly warm being in a flag, like a blanket. Ugh. Yeah, look at that. Now we pride in. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. This is going to be a really chaotic start if you are new. I promise it's only like this 60 to 70% of the time. Let me have a sip of coffee. So I wanted to talk about bisexuality this Pride anyway, because it's Pride. I've seen a lot of discussions around privilege and erasure, and I kind of wanted to touch on that. And then also, <laughs> I just had a lot of new comments as well as fun historic stuff. So I decided to put them together, just assuming I'm a lesbian, because that's what people do when you have short hair. <laughs> so there's a few things I want to touch on today, but I'm basically going to wing it. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Since it's Pride and I am your friendly local bisexual and you have to support me, it's the rules. Sorry, I don't make them. I just want to remind you that Baffy is available for the rest of this month and this month only. Get yourself a little Baffy friend. I, I just want him as in as many homes as possible. I think that would be absolutely amazing. He's super soft, he's cuddly. Two out of the three by Pride flag colors. He's a queer little demon friend. Oh, you go with my shirt as well. Please consider checking out the link down below to get your own Baffy before it is too late. Okay, thank you so much. I will now put you away and commence the actual video. Sorry, thank you, sorry. I'm allowed to promote myself extra hard during June. That's what it's for, right? So as you may have noticed, I am a bisexual person. Although the eagle-eyed viewer will note that my pride demon shirt, it's from the meme, got a shirt from the meme, uh, is actually the pan pride colors. I do have a coming out video on this channel. It's quite a few years old now and I don't remember what's in it. So I probably will go over a couple of things that I already said there. So if you're familiar with that video, sorry. But also that video exists and people are still assuming I'm straight and or gay. Not my merch. I will leave a link to the actual store that makes these down below because it's a queer artist designed this and then homophobic people took it and like got rid of the watermark and made it a homophobic meme, which sucks. But fortunately, everybody loves the t-shirt. So I think they're doing pretty well. Even so I'll leave a link down below because I know a lot of people wanted to get one of their own. Very, very quickly then, what is a bisexual other than this? <laughs> Bisexuality has been defined a few different ways over time because words and language is stupid. The general accepted definition now is attraction to more than one gender. So you would be Monosexual, if you're attracted to one gender. Pansexual then, I do have a... Let me get my flag. I've got the t-shirt, but let me get my flag, because it's fun to wave a flag. Pansexual then, flag, <laughs> is generally defined as an attraction to people regardless of gender. So gender doesn't factor into your attraction to people. That is why I identify as both pan and bi. You may have heard reference to the bisexual umbrella. That's because it encompasses lots of different sexualities because attraction, romantic attraction, sexual attraction, it's such a huge broad spectrum that there are these umbrellas. It's why people like me like to use the word queer, which I have been told off for appropriating because I'm straight. So for example, you could be biromantic and monosexual, 
You could be monoromantic and bisexual, you could be asexual and biromantic, you could be aromantic and bisexual. There is such a broad spectrum that falls under the bi umbrella and that is why the most helpful thing you can do if you're a little bit confused about somebody's sexuality is to just assume they know what they're talking about and that they're probably happy. Honestly, that's the best way. <laughs> My hope is that one day we move past the need to label everything so stringently because everything is more accepted, that sexuality, like most things, is accepted to be a general spectrum. Most people probably fall at one end or the other, but there are plenty of people at various points through the middle. And so, at least in my opinion, it's not really necessary to get to the nitty gritty of exactly what a person's chosen label is, what that means, how they defend it. And I really dislike that that is a thing. So let's talk about that for a quick second. Since I've brought it up, what, very rarely does a comment actually tee me off. I get told I'm going to hell, just a horrible person, my content's boring, you know, whatever. I, I get negative comments and it's water off a duck's back most of the time. A lot of the time I can make something funny out of it, otherwise ignore it, whatever. One that actually rustled my jimmies, one that really buttered my parsnips was one that basically told me off in essay form in the comments section for appropriating the word queer. The assumption being, of course, that I am straight. And this is why I advocate for no assumptions. What happens when you assume you make an ass out of you and me? <laughs> That's right. So one of the fun things about being bisexual is essentially coming out forever. And this is the case with other sexualities, this is the case with gender nonconformity in many cases as well. Something I have noticed about being bi is coming out again and again, because if you don't repeatedly come out, even if, say, you have a coming out video on your channel and you have a bi pride flag and you wear queer stuff and you talk about being queer all the time, people are gonna assume you're straight, <laughs> just as people are gonna assume you're gay. So you have this slightly exhausting position of coming out over and over again and people like that Jimmy Russell in comment that believe folks have to defend their sexuality, they have to out themselves in detail to all, to every stranger who wants to know, because otherwise they don't deserve a position in the queer community, they don't deserve to use the language, the colours, whatever. It doesn't take a genius to see how that's problematic. I'm gonna leave a link down below to your fave booktuber, Savvy Writes Books, aka my friend Savvy Liza, who did a video about, I've forgotten their name, one of the young folks from Heartstopper, uh, who was essentially forced out because of bisexual erasure. <laughs> and she covers that really well, so I'm not gonna go into details, but essentially this happens fairly often, especially with celebrity famous people. You see somebody acting in a queer role, for example, and a lot of people will demand to know whether they are queer enough for that queer role. Can they play somebody in a gay relationship if they might be straight? And then you can force someone who is like 16, I don't think it matters what age they are, you shouldn't force anyone out at any point, but you force someone at like 16 to be like, no, okay, I, I am, I'm bisexual, I promise, it's okay, like I relate to this character, well, <laughs> this might upset some of my queer friends, and I want you to know that when used in jest, with it, as with most things, when used in jest within queer circles, I know it's a light-hearted thing that is meant to be sort of funny and like an in-joke or silly. Gaydar does not exist, it's not a real thing, I wish people wouldn't use it because they use it wrong, and you just shouldn't assume people's sexuality. <laughs> I actually do have a really good gaydar. No, you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. There's nothing... There's no, like, identifiable traits of a queer person. You don't have a gaydar. Some very quick fun facts about being a bisexual person then, about bisexuality. As we've discussed, it is a very broad umbrella. Um, bi men exist. A lot of people forget that. The erasure I experience as a bi woman is pretty intense. Bi men are virtually invisible, as far as I've experienced. I think it tends to take men a lot longer to come out as bisexual because there just isn't really that representation. It seems to be very, very lacking. And I think all of these things link to stereotypes about bisexuality, which I will come back to. Here's another fun fact. You don't stop being bisexual when you're in a relationship. Sexuality can be fluid. You might, in fact, 
change your mind, as it is often put, and uh, who you're attracted to might generally change as you get older, just as the winds change, who knows? But you don't, as I mistakenly thought as a child, because of the lack of bi-representation, become a lesbian, to date a girl, get broken up with, fancy a boy, and then become straight again. You've been bisexual the whole time. <laughs> I did a couple of videos on this channel about some really not very nice uh, religious scholars, sort of self-proclaimed scholars that I would very much hesitate to call that, talking about things like recovering from homosexuality and how people went from homosexual to being in happy straight relationships. And again, I think that's another form of bisexual erasure. I think a lot of the, if they really genuinely are happy, probably all of the reformed homosexuals were actually bisexual all along. <laughs> I can't number them because I've forgotten where I am in the list, but here's another fun fact. Bisexual people can and do experience homophobia. If you've been around this channel for a while, you know that is true because you've seen me called the F slur. It's funny, when I'm talking about the food or slang for cigarette, I can say it. When I know that I'm talking about it as a slur, I can't say it. <laughs> it's some sort of weird uh, language thing in my brain there. Interesting to delve into another time. I'm repeatedly told I'm going to hell. I've been told by friends that I'm going to hell, that it's unnatural, called all the homophobic slurs, blah, blah, blah. And I'll come back to this when I talk in a second about privilege slash erasure. Bi people also experience biphobia. The saddest thing about biphobia is that it often comes from within the house. And again, we'll get there, I promise. <laughs> I'll come back to this when I talk about bi privilege, which doesn't exist. I, w I don't want to keep doing this every five seconds. I'm going to look like a lunatic. <laughs> I'll just have another sip of coffee. Biphobia is things like being told that it is a fad. I remember being told that by a family member that, oh, everybody on TV is bisexual nowadays. When's this fad going to end and the next thing's going to come along? Biphobia includes harmful stereotypes like being greedy. I want all the genders. I want to collect them all like Pokemon. <laughs> Go! Bisexual icon Quagsire! <laughs> hey buddy. Biphobia is being told off by the lesbian girl that you're on a date with that you make dating harder for lesbians. Because you date men. I'm sorry, I'm attracted. I can't help it. I'm attracted to them. Unpopular opinion. Boys are cute. They are. Have you seen them? Especially my one. Here's the thing about bisexuality. No one ever assumes you're it, you're bi. <laughs> no one assumes you're anything under the bi umbrella. People will assume you're straight, people will assume you're gay, even if your Twitter bio says likeable bisexual, even if you have a coming out video on your YouTube channel that is one of the most searched things on your channel, even if you mention your boyfriend all the time, people will assume you're a lesbian. Even if you fawn over Lara Croft all the time, people will assume you're straight and tell you off for using words like queer. This is the reality of bisexuality. <laughs> that rhymed. Bisexuality is also having limited icons. Let's be honest, part of the reason I fawn over Cara Delevingne so hard is because she's an out and proud bisexual representation in the world. I love her for that. Kristen Stewart is an out and proud bisexual representation in the media, and her story is a brilliant example of erasure, because when she was first seen with a female partner, she got the gal pal treatment. And then, when it was clear that they were definitely dating, people said she was a lesbian. Something else that is tricky but also irritating, <laughs> is it's harder to identify bisexual icons through history and bisexual representation in history and in fiction because, of course, there's stigma against homosexuality. And so, so much looking into, say, Victorian fiction, for example, is delving into how this character or this real person was actually probably homosexual and hiding it with these female relationships and whatever. Chances are high that some of those people were bisexual, we'll just never know. And the discourse seems to centre around homosexuality and heterosexuality. Freddie Mercury, one of the most iconic, famous bisexuals, repeatedly referred to as a gay man. I think we have this problem 
within the queer community of uh, we've all experienced in different ways a lack of representation and there is a little bit this desire the excitement I feel at Cara Delevingne talking about being bisexual there is this desire to kind of hoard representation for ourselves and this is again why I think that in the long run it's just better to embrace queerness as a spectrum and I think that's maybe part of why there is this kind of visceral need to know that person was gay you don't that person was get the heterosexual relationships they had were for this reason that reason and sometimes they're probably right sometimes i think those people are just maybe subconsciously really really keen for gay representation which is reasonable but we want it too <laughs> please all right let's talk about the thing because i keep bringing it up bisexual privilege or straight passing privilege aka bisexual erasure this is a piece of, I'm going to say, very unhealthy discourse that I keep seeing online within the queer community. I don't like it. <laughs> I might be clear enough already. The idea is that as a bisexual person in a relationship with somebody at least presenting as a different gender than you, you get to pass as straight and thus experience some privilege as a result. As we've discussed, I, as a bi person, experience regular homophobia. The only way to avoid that would be to remain in the closet. And it should go without saying that forcing people into the closet is not privilege. Having to hide part of your identity to avoid abuse is not privilege. Here's another term that I loathe and I am trying to replace in my own language because I d I've used it once or twice and I hate it. Heterosexual relationship. Now, in practice, in my mind, what a heterosexual relationship should describe is two heterosexual people together, heterosexually. <laughs> a bisexual person in a relationship with someone of a different gender is not a heterosexual relationship because they're not heterosexual. This is very intimately tied with the idea that you don't stop being bisexual if you're dating somebody of a different gender to you. And I think it's really important that we stop referring to those relationships between a man and a woman as heterosexual relationships in order to combat that stereotype that you stop being bisexual somehow. I'm a woman in a relationship with a man. It's not a heterosexual relationship. That should be known because I am very out and proud and nobody knows the sexuality of my partner. And you know what happens if we assume? Good luck captioning this video, David. <laughs> my caption guy's really good. He'll, he'll manage. The idea of het relationships relies on assumptions and thus fails most of the time. So we shouldn't do that. For example, you can have a man and a woman in a relationship. Maybe one or both of them are asexual, and sexuality isn't even a part of their relationship. Maybe it's purely romantic. They aren't a heterosexual couple. And the only way to correct that assumption in assigning them that label is to force everybody you ever meet to come out. And that is also not very sensible, and not really feasible. <laughs> Again, I am a bi person in a, according to this term, straight passing relationship. Blah, 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 blah. As discussed, I still experience homophobia. I experience a lot of biphobia. Where is my delicious privilege? And on top of the homophobia and the biphobia from outside, you get biphobia from within the community under the guise of this privilege. I just think some of the time certain people, certain groups, and I don't know whether this is consciously or unconsciously, are still looking for an excuse to other bisexuals from the community. The idea of straight passing privilege is a way to, well, you don't need to be in this community, you don't need access to queer spaces, your sexuality isn't valid, you're basically straight. Rationally, we know that's not true. And here's the sort of basis for that excuse. On a very surface level, an extremely surface, shallow level, it seems like if you are in a relationship with somebody of a different gender, and you both present clearly as that gender, you could probably hold hands in the street without facing abuse, homophobic abuse. That, for the most part, is true, and I think that's where a lot of people are coming from, where a lot of people base this idea of straight-passing privilege on. However, like I said earlier, that relies on not being out to anyone you encounter. It also relies on conforming to gender norms, which we know for a fact that doesn't work because I literally have comments saying 
are you a lesbian? You look like a lesbian. <laughs> Alternatively, you look like a trans man. People usually clock me as queer. I have the look, so straight passing privilege doesn't really work in that way. Plus, people like me who are very open about their sexuality and literally wear clothes. This is not the only piece of clothing I have that has the pan pride flag on it, you know? I put on, you probably can't even see from there, but I put on glittery purple eyeshadow for the bi pride flag. As soon as I wear a t-shirt that says pride demon with the pan colours on it, the illusion of straight passing privilege is ruined. Again, this idea of privilege relies on being in the closet. That's erasure. That's just erasure. And not in the I try to discover. Not that erasure. A little something to make me a sweater. Not that one. In conclusion to that ramble then, the only way to maintain straight passing privilege is to attempt to appear straight, to censor yourself and your identity, be in the closet. That is not privilege, that is erasure. Thank you very much. The best way to combat erasure of, of any kind, but in this case bisexual erasure, is to have better representation, better advocacy. The more people that can go out there and say, I am bisexual, this is what that means. No, it is not these stereotypes. I am a person that just falls into this description, this category. The better. A big part of that is, and I don't think this is people's fault or people's intention, I think it is a problem we have as a species of naturally black and white thinking, not questioning people when they come out as bisexual. When somebody comes out to you as bisexual, don't do what I have done when I was younger, because, again, some of this is kind of hardwired instinctive. Don't be like, but I've never seen you look at a boob, because that's absurd. I did, I did that to a friend when I was younger. I was already out, I had pushed through the phase of not understanding that bisexuality was a thing, and a friend came out to me, and my immediate reaction was, I had no idea, you've never shown any interest in, in women. And immediately I was like, you're a fucking moron, Emma, that's exactly what people said to you, that's exactly what you know that's bullshit. But here's the thing, even if you even if you have this reaction, I think it's important to examine why you have this reaction, even if you have this thought that is like, are they really though, or are they just, you know, whatever cultural stereotype, doing it for attention, are they just hypersexual, this, that, or the other, would it matter? Here's the thing, there isn't limited space in the queer community, there is room for everyone. The point is to be accepting and welcoming and challenge stereotypes and challenge norms, respect and platform people who are overlooked. You don't have to fight for that space. Bisexual people aren't coming in to steal the space of lesbians and gay men. Just like if you are gay or if you are straight, bisexual people can't help who they're attracted to. So ends this queer ramble. I don't really, I didn't really have a, a, a plan there, I don't know if you could tell. I'm gonna end by putting this um, definitely bisexual creature on my head, octopus on my head, because it's blue and pink. Um, but the pink side is angry, so I don't, this is angry, so a happy blue, we'll go happy blue. <laughs> Do let me know your thoughts and experiences down below. No homophobia, it's not allowed, it's our month, it's our special time. Wait until July 1st before you put your homophobic comments, please. <laughs> it's only fair. If you did enjoy this video for some reason, consider giving it a like, maybe share it. Do consider pressing the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. It is Pride Month and as I mentioned earlier, that doesn't mean you have to support me, so do check out the description for links to my other channels. I have a gaming channel at Little Duck Gaming. And I have a vloggy, personal, lifestyle-y channel. It's currently called Emma Thorne Extra. I'm brainstorming new channel names because I'm not happy with the channel name. So at some point, all the links to that are gonna break. <laughs> I'm good at social medias. I am also live on Twitch three times a week at Emma Little Duck. We play video games and have a good old chonkle. So do pop over there if you want to say hi. If you would like comment priority and some silly little emotes, you can become a channel member today or tomorrow or never. I don't really mind. Of course, the best way to support this channel is over on the Patreon. With that, I must give a big old thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. <laughs>
Thank you so very much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you really soon. Maybe I should always have this flag here. I kind of like this look. I look like a bisexual villain or like I'm sitting on a big lollipop. Bye. <laughs>